<sighs> oh, hey, so Minecraft is a three-dimensional game, and not just in being 3D, but also in having three in-game dimensions that you can visit. You have the massive overworld, the harsh nether, and the end, a place that originally only had the Ender Dragon boss fight, but is mostly known now for being... The end was the last dimension officially added to the game. Nearly 13 years ago, we are old. When it was added, it seemed as though everyone was completely fine with these being the three dimensions of Minecraft, but it seems though that more and more people have been talking about a potential fourth dimension to the game recently, and it kinda makes sense. Ever since King B Dogs joined Mojang, people just assumed that the Aether would be added. No. <laughs> what idiots. Ancient cities have the giant structure in the middle that Mojang likes to pretend they didn't call a portal, and also Mojang themselves have been playing with the idea. You see, Mojang likes April Fool's jokes, and in 2020, 2023, and this year, 2024, Mojang has released joke snapshots that included new dimensions to the game, two of which were entirely centered around the dimensions added. So let's take a look at those times that Mojang added a fourth dimension to Minecraft, because the craziest part about all of this is that there are actually some pretty decent ideas that I could see being implemented into the game someday, whether into the already existing dimensions or into a new one. In 2020, Emojang is working on the Nether update and got really tired of all your suggestions, so they decided to add everything into the game. Oh, this was a mistake. 20W14 Infinite is a snapshot all about making a nether portal, taking a book and quill, writing something in it, and then dropping it into the portal. The color will change, and hopping in will give you a randomly generated dimension. Well, not all the time. While most of the dimensions you'll get are certainly something, some are pre-made. Ant, patterns, content, this one's just skyblock. Inside the chest, though, is a box of infinite books, and it looks a little familiar. These books themselves aren't much, I should tweet that. And on top of the random and pre-made ones, there's another group of dimensions, ones that just straight up crash the game. Whether it's random or pre-made, you never know what lies on the other end of the portals you make. I mean, unless you looked at the wiki. Maybe it's a dimension full of copyright symbols and H's while the sound of Endermites dying plays over and over again. You never know. Pretty solid. There's also netherite stairs. added the French to Minecraft. Welcome to 23W13A or B, also known as the Vote Update. While the snapshot does include another dimension, it's not the focus this time. There's a lot here, but if you go above Y equals 700, then you're now in space. After falling for a hot minute, you've landed on the moon. <coughs> and of course, it's made of cheese, not end stone. Cheese that you can eat to remove an eighth of the block. Anywhere. Oh come on. As expected, the gravity is lower and it's possible to run out of air. But don't worry, eating cheese gives you air bubbles back. Was this intentional? You may have also noticed these blue cows. Well, these are moon cows. They drop glass bottles, cheese, bones, and their helmets sometimes, which is just a glass block. They're exactly the same as regular cows. You know, apart from the looks, drops, where they spawn, their name, the fact that they moonwalk. Yeah, they're the same. Quick fun fact about the cheese block, the reason it's based on endstone isn't because it looks like moon rock or cheese, but rather because this place is just as empty as the end. That is until you find ACME self-building lunar bases. These aren't just silly little rover looking builds, as jumping on the pressure plate has this copper thing fly in and begin making a giant structure out of copper. You'll then see these copper spleeves generate. These are just simple blocks that you can't obtain in survival and will break upon you coming in contact with them. Jumping around the lunar base, you'll also find moon mission resupply crates with various items, but also lunar laboratory equipment with very random items like budding amethyst, blaze rods, mycelium, spawn eggs, and coral. And really, that's about it for the moon. Why is that the grass color? Okay, so you know when you're farming potatoes and sometimes you get a poisonous potato and you can't do anything with it other than eat it and get poisoned? Yeah. Welcome to Minecraft 24W14 Potato, also known as the Poisonous Potato Update. An update that adds a whole new potato dimension with new mobs, items, armor, blocks, status effects, structures, biomes, and above all else, potatoes. One of the craziest parts about this dimension is how you get to it. Whenever you create a new world, the game automatically turns on bonus chests. So whenever you load in, it's just sitting there. When you open it, it seems like just a normal chest full of stuff to grow potatoes, but there's something else hiding there. The poisonous potato plant, who upon putting Putting it on your helmet will begin talking to you. After a bit, they'll tell you how to make potato eyes out of poisonous potatoes so you can reach a... I, I'm not making this name up. 
A ruined potato. Use a potato on the pedestal and you're now in potato land. Okay, so do you see the rest of the runtime of this video? Yeah, most of that is this dimension. And there's a lot I had to cut. Let's talk about the biomes you'll find here. Corruption is a forest full of potato trees. Think of the warped and crimson forest from the nether. The trees are made up of green wood and grow potato fruit. Yeah, you can eat them, but... What did you expect? This place is also full of phantoms, which you'd think would make this place the worst biome, but one, no, there's a worse one, and two, phantoms are actually really useful here, and they're stupid. I'll explain why they're useful later. The next worst place is the Arboretum, a place full of every tree in the game, except Azalea, and Crimson, and Warped. It's full of pathways throughout the biome with lanterns on them, and I just love this place so much. Just look and listen to this. It looks so cool at night, and the ambience in the background is just awesome. S tier. I mean, I'm not ranking these, but like, the other biomes have cool ambience too, by the way. Next up is fields. I think this is just from the Great Potato War. Hash is this place's desert. It's made up of gravitators, which is basically just sand. And also there's hash wells, fossils, cactus, but not cactus because they're made out of lime potato peel blocks. I'll explain what that is later. And vicious potatoes. These things are basically just turrets because either randomly or when powered by redstone, they'll just shoot any entity they see. The final biome is very reminiscent of basalt deltas, but instead of basalt, they're potato peels, and instead of lava, there's water. This biome does try to make up for the lack of lava danger by making any water in this biome poisonous. Yes, even the rain. When you see this biome from a distance, you think that it's pretty awesome because there's random pillars of ancient debris and there's slime blocks in the water, but then you find out that there's retextured guardians in the water and realize, oh, this is the worst biome I mentioned earlier. Say hello to Toxifen Slabs, a mob made with the sole purpose of making sure that if you hate guardians, you'll uninstall. They shoot these toxic beams at you that instantly poison you before the beam finishes, and unlike regular guardians, when their beam does finish, instead of just simply causing damage to you, you get the wither effect. Also, their hitbox is smaller. How fun! Also, I hope you don't plan on just avoiding them and trying to ignore them because they actually have a pretty good drop, but more on that later. When's that later? Now! This update added a ton of new blocks, some even having functionality, but the craziest part is this. The fletching table. Any of you remember when I talked about wanting this thing to get a use? I take it all back. So, while you're making your way through the potato dimension, you'll find these potato villages with potato villagers. If you try to trade with them, you'll see that they take amber gems rather than emeralds. In fact, this also applies to regular villagers, so yeah, emeralds are dead. Now, where do you get these amber gems? This is the worst question I've ever asked. Throughout Potato Land, you'll come across these ores here, and you've probably already seen that there are potato versions of regular ores, but this one isn't like any of the other ores you find in the base game. This is resin ore, and it gives you toxic resin. Out of the two things that the Toxifen slab can drop, this is one of them, and it's not the good one. Toxic resin has two little modifiers, a clarity and an impurity, which one you get is based on where you get them from. Fletching tables also get impurities and clarities when they're placed on the ground, and it's completely random which one you get. Fletching tables are completely here for the toxic resin, and in order to use a toxic resin in a fletching table, you need the fletching table to match the clarity and impurity of the toxic resin you want to use. So you now have to craft a ton of fletching tables until you get the one that matches the toxic resin you have, remember that you need to place it in order to get the clarity and impurities, and also now would be a good time to mention that there are 10 different clarities that you can get and 16 different impurities. So after basically rolling a 160 sided dice over and over again until you get the one that matches your resin, you need to place a feather inside like some sort of fuel, don't worry it's not used up, you can just take the feather back later. Watch a cool little animation with it, and after all of that, it's time to finally enjoy your new toxic resin. Yep, there's still more to learn and do. Fun fact, if you google the definition for tedious, this item shows up. Every time you use a toxic resin in a fletching table, the clarity modifier is bumped up to the next clarity modifier. They just go in alphabetical order, so you don't need to remember what their names are. The impurity you get with the new resin is also completely random. So yes, you need to make sure that you have a fletching table that matches the new toxic resin you have. Also, do you remember how many clarities there are? 10. So yes, you could end up running your resin through a fletching table, nine times. Jewel Clarity, the last one, is the only one that actually turns into Amber Gems. It is possible to get a Jewel Clarity Toxic Resin from a Toxifen Slab, uh, but no thanks. Here's a tip if you plan on doing this yourself in survival, organize your fletching tables into chests. After all of that, you're finally able to enjoy your new Amber Gems.
Remember that these replace emeralds, so all of that work was effectively done for one emerald. I want the Mojang employee who thought of this to be thrown in prison. Anyways, the amber gem block is pretty cool, and it can be used to trim your armor to give you this pretty cool color. But that's literally it. Alright, finally moving on from that. I mentioned potato peels earlier. Obtained by using a potato peeler on either mobs or by right-clicking certain blocks, you can make blocks out of those. Or you can make hash browns with them using a frying table. You can also put regular potatoes in them to make baked potatoes, and then use those baked potatoes to make baked potato bricks, and then use those baked potato bricks to make a potato refinery. What am I looking at? Here's the fuel slot, here you put a potato or poisonous potato, and here you put any item in the second slot, but you'd probably want to put a glass bottle. This will then extract oil from this slot into this slot, which can either give you a bottle of potato oil, a bottle of poisonous potato oil, or if you put oil here and an item here, you can lubricate it, making it slippery when dropped, and when applied to boots, making the ground work like ice. You can also lubricate an item more and more to make it more slippery, and it's an advancement, six actually, and one's called Get Oily. There's also a poisonous potato cutter, which lets you use a poisonous potato to cut other poisonous potatoes into slices or sticks, which can either be turned into chips or fries. Next thing, throughout the dimension you'll find these clouds hanging around the place. They don't seem like much at first, funny name I guess, Flotato, but if you combine five with three poisonous potatoes and a hot potato, Okay, you get a flotator. When powered, it's like a piston, but it keeps going and is really smooth. When a lot of people saw this, they were pretty annoyed that this was added as an April Fool's joke and not as an actual feature. And if you are expecting me to do the same, after Toxic Resin, I don't have the energy to care anymore, man. Does it belong in the game? Does it not? I get flashbacks whenever I see a fletching table from now on, I'm going insane. Remember when I mentioned that you'd want to kill phantoms? Don't worry, I forgot to. Yeah, phantoms don't normally spawn at ground level in a forest, so they kind of just get stuck in trees and their AI is just kind of dumb and doesn't know what to do in the corruption biome, so they're really easy to kill. Combining four membranes with a poisonous potato now gives you a poisonous polytra. Yes, you can now pretty easily craft elytras now. Remember these guys? I wish I didn't. Toxifen slabs have another drop that I didn't mention, that being a toxic beam. If combined with a poisonous potato block, nine poisonous potatoes, you make a lashing potato. Grappling hook is real, and if combined with a poisonous polytra, is the best way to traverse this dimension. The lashing potato also sparks similar debate to the flotator. Now what I think, when did I start turning into potatoes? I've definitely been here for too long. Alright, one last thing I should talk about. Once you start getting settled into Potato Land and you still have the potato guy that looks like the Krabby Patty disguise Plankton used that one time, the final message you're given is to throw a potato eye whenever you're ready. Doing so will lead you to the potato reskin of a bastion, the Colosseum. Entering will lead you to this place's final boss, Mega Spud, a 10 faced potato boss that jumps around. You can't attack it, but after a few hits, Mega Spud will summon random minions for you to kill. Where in one of the phases, we're shown how mad a Mojang dev was that Armadillos won the mob vote, because the second phase has Mega Spud's spawn two armadillos that you have to kill. As the fight goes on, Mega Spud gets smaller and smaller until you've eventually killed it, granting you potatish great staff of the peasant. Using this will let you create potato portals anywhere you please, but if you somehow manage to get it without ever getting the advancement for entering the potato dimension, this happens. Speaking of portals, pedestals generate in the Colosseum, and while trying to figure out how to make a portal, I forgot how strong Mega Spud is. Actually going through leads you to a portal in a stronghold, which is pretty cool, but also anytime you use one in a village, it takes you to a village in the overworld. I really like this idea of this dimension in some way mirroring the overworld, and I hope this idea is in some way used in the base game. There's so much more in this April Fool's update that I didn't cover for the sake of time, but from all the things covered in this video that was just added as an April Fool's joke, and some even being pretty cool ideas for the base game, many of you are probably wondering why a fourth dimension hasn't been added to the game or just why some of the stuff mentioned in this video haven't been added in general. Now talking about the second part is pretty messy to cover, so I just want to talk about the first part, that being why a fourth dimension hasn't been added to the game yet. We'll probably never know the true answer to this, but I think a reason as to why Minecraft hasn't gotten one, maybe gotten one yet, is because Mojang has to kind of figure out if it'll even be worth it. Most people, at least in survival without cheats, don't go to or haven't gone to the nether or end. If not many people are going to the dimensions we already have, it might not be the best idea to make an update revolving around something most players 
probably would never even interact with, which is probably why we have yet to get an end update, you know, outside of the Caves and Cliffs era. On top of that, a new dimension has to be on the same level as the Nether and End, fitting into the game somehow and being as important and as much of a staple as these two places. Maybe I'm wrong about all of this, I don't know, it's 3 in the morning when I'm writing this. Enough about vanilla stuff, I want to try something different. That content dimension from earlier looked fun. Well, I'm gonna go play some Skyblock. See you later.